Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us on ERA's webinar, SAS Changes, Your Questions Answered. My name is Barbara Perzanowski. I'm the Marketing Communications Specialist here at ERA. Before I turn over the webinar to Tom Wadera and Ellen LaRiviere, I have just a few housekeeping details. First, this webinar is being recorded, and the recording and a copy of the slides will be posted on the ERA website by the end of the day tomorrow. Second, all attendees are in listen mode, so if you have a question during the presentation, please type your questions in the questions box. Then at the end of the program, we'll answer questions that we received when guests registered for the webinar. And then for the questions that come in during the webinar, we'll post the questions and the answers on our website. So a little information about ERA. For those of you who may not be familiar with ERA, plain and simple, we manufacture reference standards. We do it five days a week, 52 weeks a year. Standards have been our business for more than 36 years. ERA is headquartered, headquartered in Golden, Colorado, about 10 miles west of Denver at the foothills of the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Our facility here in Golden includes more than 25,000 square feet of dedicated laboratory space. Now, ERA was acquired by the Waters Company in 2006, which is why the photo on your screen, you can see the Waters name above the front entrance. ERA is a leading provider of proficiency testing products, certified reference materials, and reference standards. Our products are used by more than 7,000 environmental laboratories in more than 80 countries. And an interesting fact, we have more than 35 scientists on staff. And our customer service and support team includes individuals with advanced degrees in chemistry, environmental science, and biology. And by the way, if you find yourself in Colorado to do some skiing or hiking, we do invite you to visit us in Golden, and we'd be more than happy to give you a tour. So every year, ERA offers 52 proficiency testing studies in a variety of matrices. Our annual PT study schedule includes four air and emission studies, as well as monthly studies for wastewater and drinking water, and quarterly studies for soils and radiochemistry. And every year, we, we prepare more than 1,000 custom standard projects. ERA is a TNI accredited proficiency testing provider. We are also certified as a reference material producer and a chemical testing laboratory by A2LA. And we are registered to ISO 9001 by the National Quality Assurance Organization. Now, in addition to serving the environmental segment, we also manufacture reference materials and calibration standards for total organic carbon and conductivity for pharmaceutical, medical device, and biotech manufacturers. We know there is a fair amount of uncertainty about the changes in the SAS program, but ERA has been through this type of transition several times, and you'll hear a little bit more about that from our presenters. Okay, so let's get this thing going. During the presentation, Tom Wadera and Ellen LaRiviere will give you an overview of the SAS program. Tom will define a few key terms to help your understanding, and in addition, Tom will also review the TNI SAS table, so as well and then he'll also present some information regarding the audit samples offered by ERA. And because we've received uh, numerous, uh, numerous questions related to obtaining or purchasing the samples, Ellen will review ERA's ordering and reporting process, and then we'll respond to your questions. So now it's time to turn the program over to our presenters. Our first presenter is Tom Wadera. Tom is ERA's Inorganics Product Line Manager. He's a graduate of State University of New York, Potsdam, with a degree in chemistry. Tom has worked as a chemist for more than 24 years and has been with ERA for more than 12 years. Tom is also a voting member of the TNI SAS committee. Our second presenter is Ellen LaRiviere. Ellen is a customer service PT specialist for ERA. Ellen received a bachelor's degree in chemistry biology from College of Santa Fe and a master's of science in environmental health from Colorado State University. Ellen has more than 20 years of environmental laboratory experience, and she has been with ERA for six years. And now here is Tom. Thanks, Barbara. This presentation is a high-level overview of the Stationary Source Audit Sample Program, which is in process of transitioning to private audit sample providers. And the transition is happening very soon. In fact, now a second provider has been accredited by TNI, 
Audit samples will be required with your compliance sampling events that are scheduled after June 16th. So let's discuss what the SAS program is, how it has evolved, and what it means to you. SAS stands for Stationary Source Audit Sample. The Stationary Source Audit Program provides criteria to assure that analysts and field testing personnel are sufficiently capable of conducting emissions testing for compliance with Clean Air Act requirements. Audit samples must be analyzed along with the samples collected while testing for regulatory compliance. This analysis helps the regulatory agency determine the validity of compliance test results. Let's talk a little bit about the evolution of the SAS program. Historically, EPA has administered the ordering, delivery, and evaluation of audit samples. EPA generally would have several lots of samples available and would best match what they have with what was requested. Effective June 16, 2013, EPA will turn this program over to private providers. Private providers have to be accredited to provide audit samples by successfully completing an audit of the entire process by an accrediting authority, such as A2LA, and are subject to rigorous quality control measures during the preparation and analysis of the audit samples. ERA was the first provider to be accredited to provide audit samples for the SAS program. EPA provided the audit samples free of charge. With the privatization of the SAS program, there will now be a charge for the audit samples. I will discuss the specifics of the audit sample shortly. However, ERA will have several, uh, ERA will have several lots of the necessary audit samples available at any time as stock products. These stock products will be manufactured at random concentrations throughout the SAS concentration range. These will be available for use if the facility, tester, and or regulatory agencies are accepting of the concentrations. The prices for these standards are listed on the ERA stationary source audit sample quote request. There will be times when the facility, tester, and or regulatory agencies are requesting specific concentrations, possibly outside of the SAS concentration range, or are requesting analytes that are not listed on the SAS table. ERA will satisfy these requests by manufacturing custom standards. These custom standards will be available to purchase for an additional cost. Any other information that you're looking for with respect to the SAS program can be found on the TNA web TNI website at www.nelac-institute.org. So let's discuss the audit sample versus the proficiency testing programs. The SAS program is not a proficiency testing program. Proficiency testing programs are designed to provide lab accreditation or certification. ERA does have proficiency, a, a proficiency testing program for air and emissions testing. I'd like to spend a moment to compare and contrast the two programs. Both programs involve the delivery and analysis of a blind sample. The blind samples in both programs will have concentrations known only to the provider. Where these two programs differ is that the proficiency test is an event designed to provide accreditation and or certification to a testing laboratory. The proficiency testing sample is not associated with a specific sampling event. As Barbara had mentioned earlier, ERA offers four proficiency testing studies each year for the accreditation process. Each study encompasses 17 inorganic and 7 organic standards. In contrast, the audit sample program is designed, is associated with a specific sampling event, and it is designed to assure that the analysis for that specific sampling event is within a specified acceptance criteria. It is part of a batch of field test samples, and it must be analyzed by the same personnel using the same procedures and the same materials as the batch of field testing samples. Now I'd like to discuss a few key terms that you will come across in the SAS program. The first term is an assigned value. The assigned value is a made to value of an analyte. It is calculated based on gravimetric and volumetric measurements of a starting material of known concentration. It is the concentration of the analyte 
that is contained in your audit sample. The second term is acceptance limits. The acceptance limits are a range of values that constitute acceptable performance for the participant providing results for an audit sample material. This means that if you report a result within the acceptance limits, the report that you receive back from ERA will indicate your audit sample results were acceptable. If your reported result is outside of the acceptance limits, the report that you receive back from ERA will indicate that your audit sample results were not acceptable. All of the criteria associated with the SAS program is contained on the Stationary Source Audit Sample, or SAS, table. This table can be found on the TNI website. I would like to discuss the specifics of the SAS table so that we can all understand them. There are several columns on the table with pertinent information in each column. The matrix and NELAC analyte codes are more for the provider to use to ensure that the audit sample analytes are being properly documented. So the first column I want to discuss is the analyte column. This column displays the analytes that are required for the SAS program. It also lists the methods that are required to be used to analyze the analyte. So let's look at the first analyte, which is sulfur dioxide. This analyte is associated with EPA method 6 and method 8. You can then scroll down the column to see the other analytes and the other EPA methods they are associated with. So the next column is our concentration range. Audit sample analytes should be manufactured somewhere in this range. Please note that this column also contains the units of reporting. Make sure that when you are cal calculating the results to be reported, you are reporting in the correct units. As I mentioned earlier, ERA has several lots of each audit sample available that are manufactured at concentrations within this range. These are ERA's stock products. If a specific concentration is requested that does not correspond to a concentration ERA has available in the stock product, ERA can manufacture a custom standard. Section 6.2 and 6.3 of the TNI standard, Volume 1, does allow for analytes and concentrations not listed on this table to be requested. These requests must be approved by the facility and or the state regulatory agency. ERA can provide custom standards to satisfy these requests. So let's again look at sulfur dioxide. The concentration range for sulfur dioxide is somewhere between 50 and 2,000 milligram per dSCM. So ERA stock products will be manufactured somewhere within those. If you're looking for a specific concentration or something outside of that concentration range, then that must be approved by the facility and or the regulatory agency, and ERA will provide those as custom standards. The next column you see is the acceptance limits we discussed earlier. Set acceptance limits are assigned to that assigned to the assigned value of the analyte. All providers must evaluate the audit samples according to the posted limits. So therefore every um, audit sample provider will be using the exact same acceptance criteria. So again if we go back to our example of sulfur dioxide. For the acceptance criteria, if the sulfur dioxide in your audit sample is at a concentration less than 150 milligram per dSCM, then the acceptance criteria will be plus or minus 15% of the assigned value. If the concentration is greater than or equal to 150 milligram per dSCM, then the acceptance criteria for the assigned value will be plus or minus 10%. The final column that we see there is ASRL which stands for Audit Sample Reporting Limit. This column indicates the minimum value you can report and still receive an acceptable evaluation. If the assigned value of the audit sample is at the absolute lowest concentration listed on this table, this would be the lowest number that you can report and still pass your audit sample. It is a helpful tool to use. If your result is below the number if your result is below this number, your result will be not acceptable regardless of the concentration of the analyte. I would highly recommend not reporting values less than that, that number. So now I'd like to take some time to discuss the ERA standards, the standards that ERA has available to you as audit samples. I will discuss what analytes are in the standard, 
the composition of the standards, and any preparation instructions. ERA will provide you with an instruction sheet detailing the handling and process of each audit sample with your order. So the first ones we're going to discuss are the metal standards. The metals on filter paper is a 47 millimeter glass fiber filter with the metals listed below spiked onto the filter paper. The filter is protected inside of a plastic petri dish. This sample is to be removed from the petri dish and prepared and analyzed using EPA method 29. The lead on filter paper is the same as the metals, but for lead and using EPA method 12. The mercury on filter paper is slightly different where you're going to receive a blank glass fiber filter protected in a plastic petri dish. You will also be provided with an ampulated spiking concentrate. You will need to spike this filter with a predetermined amount of the concentrate. You would then prepare and analyze the filter according to EPA method 29. So there are the remaining audit samples are what we call impinger solution samples. They are they are all concentrated solutions. All these samples will need to be pre-diluted prior to analysis. The instruction sheets that you'll receive from ERA will document the dilution process. Once the samples are diluted, the impinger solution samples can be prepared and analyzed using the appropriate methods listed on the SAS table. They are as follows, lead by EPA method 12, mercury by EPA methods 29 and 101A, and then we have our inorganic standards. So hydrogen halides, which are hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen chloride by EPA methods 26 and 26A, fluoride by EPA methods 13 and 13A, your oxides of nitrogen by EPA method 7, sulfur dioxide by EPA methods 6 and 8, and your sulfuric acid mist by EPA method 8. So now it's time to determine the samples that you need. So when preparing for your sampling event, section 4.1.1 of the TNI standard module 3 indicates that the facility will inform the regulatory agency of the provider they have selected. Then the audit sample calculation tool shown here will be filled out by the facility or the tester to determine the audit sample concentration range needed. If ERA has samples available in the concentration range suggested, then ERA will provide a stock product. If the suggested concentration is not available, then ERA will manufacture a custom standard. I would now like to turn the presentation over to Ellen LaRiviere. Ellen will explain several important components of ERA's ordering and reporting process. Thank you, Tom. What you see on your screen is a flowchart diagram prepared by the TNI SAS Expert Committee, and it's available on the TNI website, and the address is listed in the lower right part of your screen. It provides good information about who does what and when, but it looks a little bit complicated. I encourage you to visit their website to see it. It's in the Frequently Asked Questions document. For our purposes today, we've made our own version of the SAS process, so we can do a stepwise breakdown to make it easy to understand. It still looks a little bit complicated, so let's take a closer look. As you can see, the relationship between the tester and the facility is very close. They can even be the same entity in some cases. There's also an established relationship with the laboratory, which can sometimes also be an in-house laboratory. And the regulator, represented by the letter R, is also probably already involved in your sampling projects. The only thing new is your partnership with ERA. Now let's go stepwise through the process. The first step is the facility or the tester will order the samples. The need for audit samples is determined by your permit or the regulator and sample availability. We'll go through the ordering process in greater detail in just a few minutes. 
But as part of that ordering process, you will also provide us with the sampling details and analyte concentrations. The second step is ERA selects the samples and contacts the regulator for approval. We are in contact with regulator all the time, so this is nothing new to us. The regulator has a 15-day time period to review the sample selection, and that's why we'll need at least a three to four week lead time before we can ship your samples. Actually, as much lead time as possible will help us out. The third step is ERA will ship the audit samples, and we can ship the day following regulator approval or on the 16th day if we don't hear back from them. Standard shipping for ERA is two-day Federal Express, but we can ship overnight if we run into crunch time, although extra charges would apply in that case. Officially, the standard says we must ship the sample to the facility, but some testers have expressed concern that the facility will not know what to do with them when they get them, put them in a warehouse, and not be able to locate them when the tester arrives to do the sampling. So when you partner with ERA, we'll be glad to ask the regulator to allow us to send directly to the tester. The fourth step, the tester carries the audit samples around during the sampling event and then sends the audit samples with the compliance samples to the laboratory. The audit samples need to be handled and stored in the same manner as the compliance sample. The fifth step, the laboratory analyzes the audit samples and again in the same batch as the compliance samples, meaning using the same instrument under the same calibration, using the same quality control procedures and standards by the same analyst. In the sixth step, the lab reports the audit sample results to ERA, and they can be submitted either by fax or by email. In the seventh step, ERA reviews the results and compiles the reports. The reports must be issued within three business days of receiving the results from the laboratory, but must be issued to all parties within the same 24-hour period. We will also upload the results into the TNI Central database within that same 24-hour period. And in the eighth step, ERA releases the reports. The reports are released to the tester, facility, regulator, and laboratory within minutes of each other. Everyone will receive the audit sample results at virtually the same time, and the reports will be issued by email. So as I promised, let's talk a little bit more about the ordering process. We have created a fillable PDF form available on our website, and we'll have all the contact information and web address um, on the screen at the end of the webinar for you to copy down, so you don't need to worry about where it is right now. I know this form looks a little bit intimidating at first glance, but we need a lot of details before we can provide you with a quote. A lot of the information is going to be the same for future projects, so after you fill it out, you can save it and just make updates for your future projects. And if you really don't want to fill out the form, we'll be glad to take care of it. Just email us all the information. Let's look at it a little bit closer. In the first section, we'll need information about your scheduled sampling event. When is it going to happen? When do we need to have the samples ready for you? We actually will need the start and the end date of your sampling event because that's required for our uh, final report. Also in this section is a tester project ID, which is also required for our final report. What you name it is up to you, but there's a 20 character maximum. In the next section, you'll tell us what standards you need. You can select the standards using the checkboxes, and they're listed by product name and test method. You'll include your estimated concentration for each analyte and the audit sample calculation tool on the TNI website that Tom mentioned previously will help you with this section. As Tom also mentioned, we have an inventory of stock samples available within the SAS concentration ranges. If one of these samples is acceptable to your regulator, the prices listed on this form will apply. However, if the regulator has special requirements, 
which could be the analyte mix or sample concentrations, we may need to make a custom standard specific to your project. In that case, there will be additional charges for the sample. We'll, we'll be glad to get with your regulator to get approval before we provide you with a quote. One thing to remember is we cannot send the same sample lot to a facility or laboratory more than once. So we'll be checking for previous shipments to all of the parties to make sure that we don't send a sample a second time and get anyone in trouble. At the bottom of this page is the account information for the company placing the order. It could be the tester or the facility. The first thing you see in this section is the TNI code. You'll be identified by this code in the TNI Central database with the audit sample information. Everyone will be assigned a new code by TNI. Even if you had a code previously assigned by EPA, you'll need to get a new TNI code. There's a request form on the TNI website. An ERA will be glad to request your ID number for you if you'd like. Just let us know. To the right in this section is the shipping address if different from the billing address, please fill out this section. If the address is the same, simply check the box. Now that seems like a lot of information, but let's just review the important things on this page. We need to know the sampling event, uh, the dates, and your project ID, which samples you're going to request, and the concentrations, and the tester or facility information. And now we can go to page two. On this page, you'll tell us where you want us to ship the sample. It's a simple checkbox. Your first choice is directly to the facility. The second choice is to the same address as the billing address listed on page one. Or finally, to a tester address different from the billing address. In the next section, you can specify your preferred shipping method. We'll make certain that your samples arrive in time for your sampling event, so if necessary, we may need to update your selection. Standard shipping for ERA, if you don't make a choice, is two-day Federal Express, but you have other options ranging from overnight service to ground service. The shipping charges for your order will be based on the actual shipping method that we use. Note, each shipment will also have a $10 handling fee applied. In the next section is the facility information or the tester information who, if the facility is placing the order. All the reports are sent by email, so we'll need complete contact information, including the email address. And the physical address needs to be included in our final report and the TNI central database upload. Next, we'll need your laboratory information. The same information is required for the laboratory. And again, we must check to make sure that the laboratory has not had the lot of sample previously, so we'll have to check past shipment. And finally, the regulatory agency information. And because we'll need to contact the regulator, we'll need to have complete information for them as well. So on this page, let's just do a quick summary. We need to know where you'd like us to ship the samples and how you'd like us to ship the samples. Who is your facility or who is your tester? Who is your laboratory and who is your regulatory regulator? Again, provide complete information. Now let's talk a little bit about the reporting process. Initially, the laboratory will fax or email results so we can verify the reports and meet the deadlines. The TNI database is still in development so it's kind of a great unknown for us. What you see on your screen is the example of reporting forms. Most of the information on the forms will be in, filled out by ERA, and the laboratory will just need to verify the information on the form and read and sign the attestation statement on the bottom. Then there will be a page for reporting each of the audit samples. On this page, we need only the method, analysis date, and the analytical result. The analyst name is an optional field, but it will be included on the report, and it will be blank if an analyst is not provided. 
Here is the example of a result page from our final report. You'll be able to see the reported result from the laboratory, the assigned values, the acceptance limits, and whether the sample was graded acceptable or not acceptable. Now let's go over a few key points, just as reminders. The SAS audit samples are required for sampling events scheduled after June 16th of this year. ERA needs a three to four week lead time. And because this is a new program, we want enough time to do a really good job for you. We need to compile everything and contact the regulators. And as we talked about earlier, there could be a requirement to manufacture custom standards specific to your project. And again, you'll have more flexibility in your shipping options. Product instructions are included with every sample. In the box will be the instructions that include a complete description of the product, sample handling and storage information, dilution instructions, instructions on how to report the results, and the data reporting forms. If you run into trouble, technical service their technical support and customer service is avail available Monday through Thursday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time and on Friday from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. And please get in ERA involved early in the process. We want to partner with you and help you be successful. We are very experienced and good at what we do, so let us help you be successful too because the regulator will need to be involved in determining whether stock products will be acceptable. Getting us involved early will help to provide accurate cost information for your customers. Now Tom and I are going to respond to some of the questions we received from attendees with your webinar, webinar registrations. Our first question is from Lucas. And he asked, can audit samples be pre-ordered and kept by the tester? The answer to this is no. Samples are specifically selected and in some cases need to be custom made to meet your specific project requirements. Also, all the samples require regulator approval for each sampling event. Carl asked, do you send audit pass-fail to testers with regular results? And does everyone get the pass-fail notice simultaneously? The tester will receive the audit sample results as soon as they're available. Results are sent by email to the tester, facility, laboratory, and regulator at the same time. ERA does not do anything with the compliance sample results, so those should come directly from the laboratory. Here's a question from Rick, and he says, or he asks, does ERA consider that a 21 to 30 day lead time is adequate when agency approval was obtained before the order was placed with ERA? And if I understand this question correctly, I think you're asking if you get your sampling event approved by the regulator prior to placing your order, do we still need a three to four week lead time? Even if the tester and regulator have agreed on the sample concentrations for the sampling event, a second approval is needed from the regulator for the selected samples. The samples provided by ERA, ERA will not precisely match the requested concentrations, so the regulator will need to approve our selection. If the regulator is not satisfied with the available stock products, ERA will need to manufacture a custom standard to meet their specifications. Several people inquired about the cost of the samples. The prices for stock products are listed on the quotation request form, as we mentioned. Once your project requirements are reviewed, we will contact a regulator to determine whether our stock samples will be acceptable or if some standards are required. Then we can provide you with a firm quote that will include all of the audit samples and the shipping and handling charges. And John had a question about purchasing online. Can I buy audit samples online? We have a fillable PDF quote form request 
available online to initiate your process. But because the samples are specifically selected for your project, we'll need to help you complete that order. We've also had a few technical questions, so I'll turn the questions over to Tom. Thanks, Ellen. Terry asked the question, is there any permitted emission limit too high or too low that an audit sample would not be done, like for lead using method 29? Uh, Terry, not necessarily. The TNI standard does provide for audit samples to be manufactured at concentrations above or below the concentration range listed on the SAS table. Any requests for audit samples outside the range must be approved by the facility and or the regulatory agency. We also have a question and comment from Calvin. He expressed a concern about the sample concentration, degree of accuracy, and potential levels of degradation. So if I understand this question correctly, the concentration is assigned by weights and measures. The concentration is then verified by ERA's in-house lab to quality measures which are three times tighter than the acceptance limits which are posted on the SAS table. As for the degradation, ERA will provide a statement of stability with the samples indicating a date with which ERA will guarantee the stability of the assigned value. Rick asked the question, when will additional audit samples be available? ERA already has audit samples available as stock products. ERA can also provide custom standards upon request. Here's a question from Randy. The only available audit sample is not in the range of the samples we are collecting. What do we do? Well, in this case, the facility and or the regulatory agency can approve the available sample or ERA could provide you with a custom standard. We received this question from Mike. What methods require an audit sample? As we discussed earlier, the methods requiring audit samples can be found on the SAS table and only if there are two, at least two accredited providers for the specified method, which is method 29 for metals, method 12 for lead, methods 29 and 101A for mercury, methods 26 and 26A for hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen chloride, methods 13 and 13A for fluoride, method 7 for the oxides of nitrogen, method 6 and 8 for sulfur dioxide, and method 8 for sulfuric acid mist. Another question is, what compliance testing requires the samples, and does each state implement the program themselves? Compliance testing requirements are determined by the regulatory agency for each individual state. So a couple other questions. One I received was, according to 40 CFR 63, the acceptance limits shall be set so that there is a 95% confidence interval and that 90% of well-qualified labs will produce future results that are within the acceptance limits range. Is it really expected that 10% of well-qualified labs will produce results that are outside the acceptance limit range and or that 10% of the results produced by a well-qualified lab will be outside of the acceptance limits? If so, has EPA or any regulatory agency indicated how such a large number of failed audit results shall be treated? The 95% confidence interval is determined by data, is by using data that's already been collected by the EPA in the audit sample program. It doesn't necessarily mean that only an expected 90% of the labs will pass. The 90% rate is based on data already submitted. The degree to which labs pass and fail will only be determined by continued collection of data in this program. Also, the handling of pass and fail results will be determined by the individual state regulatory agencies. Another question, the TNI provided provider standard, Volume 1, Module 1, in Section 6.2 says the matrices of all audit samples shall to the extent possible resemble the matrix matrices which participants routinely analyze. For some methods, there are more than one matrix for the same analyte. 
For example, in method 26, samples collected in an acidic matrix of 0.1 normal sulfuric acid or can be collected and also in a basic matrix of 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. Each are analyzed for halide ions in, by ion chromatography. However, the SAS table specifies in note 8 that method 26A audit samples for hydrogen chloride and hydrogen fluoride are prepared from potassium chloride and sodium fluoride in HPLC grade water. Uh, so the question here is, is HPLC grade water the matrix for audit samples for method 26A? And is any sodium thiosulfate added to the sample for method 26A? So method 26A covers not only hydrogen halides, but it also covers the halogens, which is chlorine and bromine. The sodium thiosulfate is added to the samples for the uh, chlorine and the bromine, or the halogen test. Um, and also, the 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide is added for additional bonding purposes to analyze the, the, hal the halogens as opposed to the halides. So those are not presently contained in the SAS program, but if there were a special request for halogens, um, and it is approved by the regulator and or the facility, ERA does provide those in the matrix listed of 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. With respect to the sulfuric acid, ERA has chosen not to put the sulfuric acid in the matrix itself as the sample is designed to be run by ion chromatography and a large um, sulfate peak could potentially interfere in the chromatographic analysis. Um, also, the sulfuric acid is designed to be put in the impinger solution to, in, to help to solubilize the hydrogen fluoride and the hydrogen chloride. The solutions that are provided to you by ERA are already solubilized. TNI has a frequently asked question sheet on their website which may help to answer some of your questions as well. So before we finish up today, I would like to take a moment to provide some information about why you should partner with ERA for your SAS needs. First, ERA has in-depth experience in providing samples for the air and emissions programs. ERA is the only provider of audit samples who also has an established proficiency testing program for air and emissions. ERA has been providing the same audit samples that you will receive as part of our air and emissions programs since 2007. ERA has extensive experience in quickly and successfully transitioning programs from EPA to private providers. In 1999, ERA trans transitioned the wastewater and drinking water PT programs from the EPA. In 2001, ERA transitioned the DMRQA chemistry and whole effluent toxicity programs from, ER from EPA. And in 2003, ERA transitioned the radiochemistry program from EPA. ERA was the first proficiency testing provider to develop and implement an air and emissions program. And ERA has 35 scientists on staff that can provide technical and reporting support for your organization during the SAS program. So if you're having difficulty in your process, ERA has the expertise to walk you through it. On behalf of my colleagues at ERA, we appreciate everyone taking time to join us today. We hope that you picked up some helpful information and that we addressed some of the concerns you may have about the SAS program. With this being a new program of sort, questions will continue to come up. ERA wants to be your partner in the process and we encourage you to call us with your questions and send us emails and we will do whatever we can to help you as the program rolls out next month. Remember to visit our website for additional information. And again, thank you for joining us, and this concludes our presentation.